Okay, what's up, YouTube? Reef Rookie back to talk more about ick. Let's talk about ick eradication. Part two of my three-part series. Part one, we talked about copper treatment. Today, we're going to talk about tank transfer method. So, little update. There's my little yellow tang. He's hanging out. He's in copper treatment right now. He's been in copper since last Monday. Today's Wednesday, so about 10 days he's been in copper. He's got about another week to go in the copper treatment. Then we'll do a uh, water change. We'll run some activated carbon. We'll try and get all that copper out of there, and we'll observe him for a couple weeks, maybe two more weeks, and see how he goes. He's eating. Everything I give him, I give him mice shrimp. Every other day, I give him some seaweed on the clip, and every few days, I uh, throw in some uh, pellets. And he seems real happy. He eats everything I get. He's getting more comfortable living in this house. Uh, my my kids drive him a little bit crazy, I think, because they run they run around, they slam this cabinet door underneath them. I think it freaks them out a little bit. But during the day when it's quiet, I think he's he's chills out. I'm on a day off today, so I figured we'd do part two of this series. So anyway, tank transfer method. So to understand the tank transfer method, you, you need to have a basic understanding of the fish disease. Okay, last video I, I went kind of in depth on how the fish disease this uh, I shouldn't say disease the fish parasite um, lives. So basically, I'm going to give you to you in a nutshell. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, the ick parasite attaches to the fish, lives on the fish for a couple of days. Okay, the ick parasite falls off the fish and sits in the sand bed for anywhere between two and twenty eight days. It encrusts into like what, what you could describe as an egg. Inside the egg, the egg parasite is multiplying. After the 28-day period, the egg hatches, and all these free-swimming parasites come back into the water column. They swim around, and they reattach to the fish. Okay, That's basically the egg parasite in a nutshell. And when it reattaches to the fish, the cycle starts all over again, and the fish eventually becomes overwhelmed because there's so many egg parasites in the water that uh, he can't he can't outrun them, he can't, can't deal with them. So... Now, that stage is important because a lot of times it, it makes hobbies, people in this hobby think that, oh, I'm not showing any signs of ick, the ick is cured, I'm going to take him out of quarantine, I'm going to throw him back in my tank. Lo and behold, ick is back because the free swimmers hatch and they reattach to whatever it is you put in your tank and ick starts all over again, okay? So, the, tr the key behind the tank transfer method is to sort of fool it into thinking that it's okay to <laughs> sit on the bottom of the tank and crystallize and reproduce inside the egg. Okay. So the thought behind the egg transfer method, uh, yeah, the egg tank transfer method, is that you're really trying to outrun the parasite's life cycle. Okay. Um, if the fish is infected with ick, the trophons will fall off the fish. At some point um, during the tank transfer method process, uh, the encrusted stage doesn't have enough time to release therons, that is the free swimmers, back into the water column to reinfect the fish. Okay, Before the fish exits the tank, um, that's what happens. So the fish, the fish exits the tank, the free swimmers don't have time to, to attach to them. Now there's some pros to this. Okay, um, One, you're not using any medications or chemicals. Some people don't like to use copper because it, they say it makes the fish really uncomfortable and adds stress to them. Two, uh, ammonia isn't really a big factor because you're putting the fish in brand new fish tank water every three days. And the ammonia doesn't have time to build up, therefore it doesn't become toxic to the fish. Another pro is you don't really have to work, worry about medication contraindi contraindications such as um, you can treat with Prazapro with this guy because the, there's no chem other chemicals in the water like copper that could cause problems. So if you need to deworm this guy at the same time, you can treat the fish tank with Prazapro. Okay? Um, now, some cons. It's pretty labor intensive. First of all, you need two tanks, or basically two vessels that hold water that you can use as a tank. Two heaters, two thermometers, two items that move the water around, such as a power filter or power head or air stone. Uh, two sets of PVC elbows, and that's about it. Um, I get the, I keep the um, ammonia alert badge in there, just in case. So you need two sets of those. I don't have two sets of everything, 
so I don't use the chunk transfer method. And I don't, I don't really have time to make new fresh water every three days, transfer the fish, and so on and so on. So anyway, a little example of how the chunk transfer method works, okay? Day one, okay, you put the fish in your original quarantine tank. Okay, day four, or roughly 72 hours later, you transfer the fish into the new tank, okay? The time of day doesn't really matter, okay? People used to say you do it first thing in the morning because that's when the ick hatches, but uh, I don't think that matters. It doesn't really make it a difference. Just make sure you don't exceed 72 hours from the first time you put them in the tank, okay? Temperature in the salt gravity of the new tank needs to be matched to the old tank, okay? Now, day seven, you repeat. Day 10, you repeat. Day 13, you repeat, okay? Now, some people say after day 13, you're done, and your fish tanks, your fish should be ick-free. That's fine. I'm not sure how long you should do it for. I would probably do it for probably two more times just to be on the safe side. I like to I like to go slow in this hobby and make sure it's gone. But that's basically the tank transfer schedule in a nutshell. Now, some people say it's the most underrated and under, underused method of ick eradication that, that's out there, okay? I, I think it works. I'm not going to knock it. Uh, it does have some drawbacks that keep me from using it, though. It's pretty labor-intensive, okay? Like I said, every 72 hours, the fish, fish has to be caught and placed in a new quarantine tank, okay? The old tank has to be properly sterilized. And when I say that, you have to get rid of the water, sterilize it with a bleach solution or vinegar, and dry it for a day. Make sure everything's dry. You have to sterilize your PVC elbows. You have to sterilize your thermometer, your heater, all that stuff. Make sure everything's dry so that the ick doesn't have a chance to live there and go back into the new tank. Now, another drawback for me personally is the fish has to be handled frequently. Every three days, you're, you're, netting, your, you're netting your fish, okay? That could cause secondary stress, which could cause other infections, okay? Especially if you're, you're netting them, especially if the fish is already stressed, which chances are he probably is because he's been traveling, he's in a new quarantine tank, he's in a new environment, you're trying to get him, uh, get him used to, to living in your house. Um, the frequent movement of the fish to a new tank can cause stress and hamper his recovery, okay? So, that's basically in a nutshell. Now, some people say, hey, I got a fish that I can't use copper with. Well, tank transfer method is for you. If I do end up getting a fish that I can't use copper on, I may, I may do that. I may do the hyposalinity. Um, it's a coin toss for me which one is more labor-intensive, the hyposalinity or the tank transfer method. I'm probably going to go with hyposalinity is more difficult than the tank transfer method. So, um you got to also remember, I didn't mention this before, but the tank transfer method is only useful if your fish has ick or velvet. Those are the two parasites that this, this works mostly on. Now, this little guy in my fish tank, he, I don't know if he has ick. I bought him almost three weeks ago from the fish store. So he's in quarantine, yeah, quarantine, quarantine, and uh, I'm treating him prophylactically. So basically what I did was he went into quarantine for a week clean water. I got him relaxed, eating. Then I treated him for a week with Prazapro, just in case he's got some worms to try and deworm him. So he sat in Prazapro for a week. I did a water change, took out the activated carbon, and now I'm treating him with copper. He'll sit in copper for probably another week, and then I'll act, put the activated carbon back in, do a pretty substantial water change, try and get all that copper out of the tank and let him sit for probably another two weeks of observation and relaxation time. Um, I think that when you get a new fish, if you're going to treat him prophylactically, that's the way to go. Uh, the tank transfer method to me is kind of labor intensive, like I said, especially if you're not sure if your fish has ick. If you do have an ick outbreak, then that's probably the, an easier way to accept that procedure. So anyway, um, I don't want to get too long in this video. I'd like you guys to like. I wish you guys would subscribe. I want you to remember to, to, you know, subscribe and get into our 100 subscriber giveaway, which means when I reach 100 subscribers, one of you lucky subscribers is going to get a free gift from me, the Reef Rookie. And it's it's a good gift. If you're into this hobby, it'll be something worthwhile. Um, you professionals out there, if you see something I'm doing wrong or if I gave you some bad information, please let me know. Comment below. If you like it, comment below. And like I said, keep those fish fat and that water clean. This is Reef Rookie, signing off.